Hey everybody! Welcome to today's lesson to review radiographic anatomy demonstrated on routine projections of the wrist. In a previous lesson, we discussed the anatomy of the wrist and which radiographic projections are routinely performed, so let's tie that information to the radiographs themselves. As a reminder, the routine radiographic projections of the wrist are PA, PA oblique, and lateral. Let's start with the first image. What projection is being demonstrated here? Let's take a look. This is a PA projection of the wrist. We know this because there are equal concavities on the shafts of the proximal metacarpals, near equal distances between the proximal metacarpals, and minimal superimposition at the distal radial ulnar joint. What about the anatomy? Working from the most distal to the most proximal anatomy, we can clearly identify the proximal metacarpals, distal and proximal rows of carpal bones, as well as the distal radius and ulna. If we look more closely, we can identify the individual carpal bones by row. Do you remember the mnemonic for the carpal bones? Let's review the one that follows the carpals in a circle, starting with the most lateral bone in the proximal row. So long to pinky, here comes the thumb. Scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, pisiform, hemate, capitate, trapezoid, trapezium. Also remember, the trapezium is under the thumb, and the trapezoid is inside, surrounded by four bones. What projection is demonstrated in this image? Which direction was it rotated? How do you know? This is a PA oblique projection of the wrist with 45 degrees of lateral rotation. Remember, it is external or lateral rotation because it is being rotated away from the median plane of the body. In this image, we know it is a true 45 degree oblique because the ulnar head is partially superimposed by the distal radius, and the proximal third through fifth metacarpal bases are mostly superimposed. Let's discuss the anatomy in this projection. Working from the most distal to the most proximal anatomy, we can still identify the proximal metacarpals, distal and proximal rows of carpal bones, as well as the distal radius and ulna. Note the slight superimposition on the medial aspect of the hand and wrist because of the external rotation. Once again, the final projection in the series is the lateral. Let's take a look and see what makes it a true lateral. For a lateral projection of the wrist to be a true lateral, there must be complete superimposition of the ulnar head by the distal radius and alignment and superimposition of the proximal second through fifth metacarpals. Like the hand, wrist anatomy can be most difficult to distinguish in the lateral projection. Working from the most distal to the most proximal anatomy, we again have the proximal metacarpals with two through four superimposed. Superimposed distal and proximal rows of carpal bones, as well as the superimposed distal radius and ulna. Were you able to correctly identify the anatomy in these images? In summary, the routine radiographic projections for the wrist include PA, PA oblique, and lateral. Obtaining clear, diagnostic quality images of the wrist can help identify fractures and other pathological conditions. Identifying and recognizing the relevant anatomy is the first step in ensuring the evaluation criteria are met.